Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video for your enjoyment. And this series, we're going to finish off the very basic tutorials series. And this is always from the book, C64 User's Manual. So the last chapter will be on sound, and I found this one pretty interesting. It was actually learning some things I didn't know before. So let's get started. And also, before we get started, if you guys haven't seen it already, I've made some changes to the website here and just wanted you to check out the new section here. It's for a game walkthrough. I included uh, Dragon Slayer Part 1 and Part 2. I'll be doing more of those as time goes on. So anyways, it's time to get the show on the road. And um, to get started here, I'm talking about the Commodore 64 sound. It contains, uh, the Commodore 64 itself contains nine octaves and three separate voices simultaneously. So there's a lot of instruments you have access to using the SID chip. And you can see this is a little document I created. This is based off the book too. And I just found this piano keyboard um, online. I couldn't find anything. The book actually shows you this, for example, if you need to look at it right there. That's actually what I was trying to reproduce right there. That's the best I could get to it. So if you know how to play a piano keyboard, you'll be more familiar with this. If not, don't worry. Uh, the book kind of breaks this down for you. And I found some other examples I'd like to show you. So. Okay, so sounds are played by putting a series of notes together. That's what creates the music. And um, these are some, this is going to be for musicians again, by the way. So if you need to know music, there's a, basically a separation of notes and how they're going to sound to before you get to the next note. And this is what we call the whole note versus the half note, the quarter note, eighth note, and so on. And then they have rests in between. That's basically like the pauses and stuff like that. The book doesn't really talk a lot about that, but I just thought I would throw that in there from a musician standpoint. Um, I don't know how to really read notes or in like music or anything, but I had to understand the timing between music. Otherwise, you know, it would, wouldn't make it very far if you didn't. So anyways, um, let's get into the more important stuff to try to keep this video as concise and as short as possible. Okay, so what I did is I created a table here based on sounds that we're going to be finding in this example. So these are all based off of the SID microprocessor. That's a chip inside of your Commodore 64 which controls the sound. And um, as I mentioned, the three voices that we have. And this is showing you a chart of breaking these down. These are registers, by the way. This is, um, if you had to look at it like this, this register, let's say this register starts at 54, right there. And then if you want to get to the 2 there, which we'll see this later, you basically just add a, um, and get there, add a 2 like that for whatever the value is. That's going to be for the V. The value would be this, in this example, if you want to use a piano, you would use 225 and something like that. And then the 3 is for the, the third register, and that one has a 0 in it. The 4, you can see here, has a 65 in it. And then that would be a 65, and so on. And that's how you um, basically get the sound loaded into the program. But we'll go over that later. I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that from the perspective of the book. These are the different instruments that we're going to see a program example in before this uh, demo is over. And here's the song that we're going to be playing. Um, now I found this online since the book um, has a very, you know, condensed version of it. But if you want to see it, it's right there. And it's Tom Dooley. It's a song that they are using. Now this book, I mean this example I found online obviously has more of the musical instruments and stuff like that, the claps and that. And it shows the actual notes and stuff in succession. Um, but it isn't more about really learning this than it is about really understanding those notes. Once you know where the notes and what registers to poke into, you can actually end up creating any song you want. Now what's really cool I wrote in this section is having a computer, you don't have to sit there and go out and buy a bunch of instruments. For example, like I own a guitar, I own three guitars myself and a lot of equipment and I paid a lot of money just to get those. With a computer, of course, all you have to do is basically 
access those registers and you can instantly switch from a piano to a trumpet to whatever. Okay, so um, don't want to really confuse you a lot, but this is what I was trying to show you earlier. The book really doesn't digest this down fast enough. It just kind of starts explaining registers. And that's why I wanted to show you the piano register is 255. I don't know if that's right, 255. That was 225. Might have put it maybe a typo right there or something. Oh, oh, the value is 255. I guess this is an example they have. But anyways, yeah, this should be 225. And this is just based off of that example we saw earlier up here. So if you see, register 3 is 0, register 4 is 65 for on and off. Register 5 is 9 and register 6 is 0, if you can remember those. That's this whole section right there. So it's breaking it down for you, showing you that's how you get the piano sound going. And notes are read as a D eighth quarter. Um, this was in a book, but I don't want to go into a lot of example. This is not a musical um, tutorial, but rather, you know, it's um, just kind of a, a simple tutorial to get sound started on your Commodore 64. Um, there's also something called the these are the notes one and the note two registers. Um, and this is how they're going to be entered. And when we see the program example, we'll understand this later. But the eighth note is broken down into 250 and used 250 for the eighth note, which this is uh, listed in the data statements later. The quarter note is 500. The half note is 1,000. The whole note is 2,000. So these are how you get those different intervals in, in music. And it's really important. I didn't understand this before because, like I said, if you're playing a guitar, if you're playing the piano, you're not just sitting there playing note, 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 note. You're playing note pause, rest, quarter, half note, or whatever as you're going through and that's how music comes together and it sounds a lot better. And here's an um, example. Now this is probably getting a little bit more far-fetched but the book talks about this. Um, looking, um, These are the, the high and the low bytes that you'll use to enter in whatever, whoops, I think I went too big there, whatever um, whatever note you're looking for and these go from C sharp flats to whole notes and everything in there. So I won't go into a live example on those because I don't want to confuse you. But it wanted to it mentions those and those could be found more likely in this book right here, the one I recently got and so glad I got this book. I'll probably be using a lot of examples from it. Um, it talks more in depth about that. Okay, so the as I showed you earlier, the values are poked into memory location. We'll go into vice here in just a minute. And if I haven't mentioned it, uh, Vice is just a way to emulate what's on your Commodore 64 and use it on your desktop for those who want to know. I figure I may want to start mentioning that since people probably are wondering what the screen's blue box is every time. Okay, so down here you break the notes into register 1, N2 into register 0. And these are the locations, 54, 272, and I'm glad you put that, 54, 273, and it's broke down to N1 for 54, 272, and N2 for 54. 273, and that's how they're divided. Um, and then down here below, I list uh, three octaves of notes for bass and treble clef. Um, this is found in this is actually in the book. It's showing you how they're broken down. So if you want to know what the G note is, you need to enter for note one. Remember that 54, 272. You're going to use a six. If you need the, um, the well, you're going to need both these. You're going to need the six, and then you're going to need the 36 to get the um, the registers in here properly. These are how you get the sounds. The notes are made up of all sounds. Every good boy does fine, is it? I forget. So it's basically G, A, B, C, D, E, I'm sorry, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and E. Those are all of what all notes are made up and all, you know, all scales of musical compositions are made up of those exact notes. Once you know those and you know scales, you can kind of play anything you want. But we're not here to talk, like I said, a lot about musical theory. I just wanted to show you that. And these are um, how the Commodore 64 breaks them down here. This will make more sense when you see the program later. But this is actually, I didn't understand this right away, the way they um, kind of laid it out. They should have showed the program first and it showed this stuff later. But I realized that these are the, the data statements. And these are the notes being entered in for that 54272 and 54273. So I pulled out my book here to show you. This is a 54272. And this is a 54, 273. So these are the frequency, low byte, and the high byte. And that's what we're essentially doing over here is we're just throwing these values into those registers. And that's just from the map in the Commodore 64 book. So I'm trying to see if I could skip over some of this stuff. Um, this is basically, oh, so register uh, 
24, so S plus, remember we saw that S equals earlier, is 54272. That's the register that starts off the sound, which I just showed you there in the book there. And then if you basically add the number, so you take S plus the number, that's going to figure out which register you want to access. In this case, if you do, and now I'll do it over here real quick here. We'll just say S equals 54272. Remember, that's how you initialize. If we did S plus 24 comma 15, that's controlling the volume, and that's what this is talking about right here. It says register 24, that's the volume control. But we'll go into more of that later. Okay, so this registers 4 is really um, how you turn a sound on and off. If you don't leave the sound, if you leave it on and don't turn it off, you're going to have a long series of tones or whatever kind of musical composition you're choosing or whatever kind of you know value, register, distortion that you're choosing. It's always important. You'll see this later, but that's basically just doing the poke S plus four comma whatever value, and then you're going to turn it off later with poke S plus four comma sixty five. I think that's the way it goes. I may have that backward, but anyways, those are the those are those how you turn them on and off based on that chart we saw earlier, right here. So yeah, sixty four is off and sixty five is on. Okay, so uh, you just saw this example, so we're going to start entering in a program as we already started to do in here. So we'll just erase this and start over just from scratch so people can follow in consistency. I'm going to set the background color here so we can get a nice looking color and then just change the color here a little bit. Clear up the screen a little bit here. So we'll start with our 54272. And remember that just initializes the sound registers. And that's the start of them. And then we've got the next line here. Um, they actually stuck this on this line. I'm just going to stick it on another line. SW equals S to S plus. Let's see. SW equals S. Yeah, to S plus 24. Like SW comes to zero. Next SW, that's going to register. I didn't mention this, but you want to basically clear out all the registers whenever you're using them so that there's no remaining values, tones, distortions, or whatever left over. And here's our volume control. And this is all according to the book. Okay, so the next thing we're doing here is we're activating registers 2, 3, 5, and 6 based on the instrument you saw. Now we saw these earlier, 255. Um, let me just pause for a second. Excuse me for that. I was trying to figure out why they kept putting 255 back in here um, when I'm, I thought it was 225, but for some reason the book has it as 255, so I'm just going to leave that not to change anything here. And then this is register, remember this is register 2. And this is 54, 272 plus the 2, if you had to do it that way, plus 2. And also, so what I did is I pulled up my Excel document, the one I created from Apple Comma 64, to show you when we're doing the S plus 2 and S plus 3, S plus 4, this is essentially what we're doing. So maybe I could minimize this and show this somewhere over here. So that you could still see it somehow. I don't know. I have an idea. Went back and changed my screens a little bit more. So basically it's a little bit easier to see it. So I've got this down here at the bottom now. And I've just got the Word document at the top here. So you can see here S plus 3. If you look down here you can see that that's voice 1, pulse waveform width. Or 54274 because we added a 2 to the 54272. And if you look over here, S plus 24, if I scroll through here, you could see that the 24 is the volume. And these right here, these are the addresses. This is the symbols, books. You can ignore this stuff. This is for assembly language. But right here, and this is going to show you basics. So this is the one you want to pay attention to is the basic field here. This is going to represent this value, S plus whatever the value is. So if I go down here to 24, for example, I'll show you. Hard to find it when I'm scrolling right there. You can see that that's the volume and the filter select register. So getting back to the 5. Here somewhere, if I just skip it right there. That's the voice attack decay register. So that's basically what we're doing right there is we're, we're setting the, um, the attack and the decay. So back to S plus 3 here. And this, um, by the way, this Excel document is available on my um, GitHub for those who want to download it. 
So we saw the registers earlier, S plus 3, so it's basically taking uh, 54, 275 and sticking a 3 in there to initialize the piano, which they require for a 0. And then the 5 is going to have the 9 in it, as we already saw down here. The 5 is the voice 1 envelope. That's the, the attack, decay, uh, sustain, release control. And then 6 is the next part of it, so you've got to have both of those in there. Okay, so moving right along here, so we're going to go back over to our example now. We're going to enter these in, since we've already discussed them. And like I said, this is the volume. How loud do you want it to be? I'm going to say, how loud? And then the three. I think I'm going to grab my book because it's going to take too long to try to look, their, look this stuff up all the Well, actually the book doesn't break it down anyway, so I'll just put it on here again, I guess. So this is the pulse waveform. And that's the low byte. Yeah, low. Let's put low here. I'm trying to do a little dash there, low. And then we got 5, of course, which is basically the attack, sustain, release, control. Okay, so I wanted to mention something really important here, even though the book doesn't really talk about this a lot. This document, which is from Map to Come 64, does talk a little bit better about it. So it's basically saying when a note is played on the musical instrument, the volume does not suddenly rise to a peak and it cuts off to zero. Rather, the volume builds to a peak, levels off to an intermediate value, and then fades away. This is, creates what is known as the volume envelope. So if you say that word envelope, that's what envelope means. The first phase of the envelope in which the volume builds to a peak is known as the attack phase. So basically, as it starts to rise, that would be the attack phase. And then the second in which it declines, so after it attacks, it starts dropping down. This is uh, to an intermediate level. It's called the decay. So we got the attack rising up and the decay falling back down, basically. The third in which the intermediate value, level of volume is held is known as the sustain period, um, basically how long you're going to hold the sound. The final interval in which the sound fades away is also called the release part of the cycle, so we got to release the note or release the sound. And right there is a good example. The volume builds to a peak, and it shows you the definitions for you. The volume builds to a peak during the first phase of the envelope. The volume declines to intermediate level. The intermediate level of the volume is held. Release part of the cycle, final interval in which the sound fades away. So. Basically, that's what that's doing is it's controlling in this register, which I, I named a voice early, but it's not the voice, excuse me. This is the attack, decay, sustain, release, and that's what this does is it controls those. Okay, so next get back to 6, and basically... Same thing, basically. So the attack, release... Okay, so let's get back on to the next part here. So now this um, next part down here, this is what's going to create the notes here. And these are going to be read into data streams. That's what this N1 is, Note 1 and Note 2 and so forth. I don't remember which one I'm clicking in at all times. Okay, should be good on that. And then we skip line, oop, I did 70, we don't have a 70, actually we have just an 80. They skipped 70 in the book here. So we got 90, because I think it's used for something else later. And then we've got register 4. And once again, we can just go down here and use our, our guide here to see what it is. This is the voice control register, that's the one I was trying to find. This is the voice control register. Okay, good. And you've seen this earlier where we saw the 64 and 65. So this is basically what, what tells you this is the piano. And then the other values you saw earlier determines which instrument. We'll go more into that example later when I show you a final program here that I created for this. But to, to be consistent, just know that for now 65 is the piano. And you poke it into this register to get the voice going. This is the duration we talked about earlier. I think we did. 
maybe we did it. Duration is how long it's going to last. And then this turns off the sound. This is necessary. After you put the voice in, you want to turn it off. The sound will stay off for a short period, which is about one tenth of a second. And then here's our notes. Yep, that's what 70 was for. Reads in our notes. Note 1, note 2, and the duration. And then we have a loop that just kind of repeats back. And the data statements, you saw these earlier, but basically um, these are those notes. If I could go back to where I found it, here it is. Here's where it, basically these are the notes. So the 18, this is the D note, and then you need this one for, to represent the D note. So these two values are important. And this just does D again, but this is the, basically also telling it what the duration is, how, how long they're going to last, and this is the, the value, whether it's the note, you know, half note, quarter note, or whatever. And this is how you get these um, exact musical notes going on. Um, this is not really to understand a lot about musical theory, but just know that musical theory does divide un an understanding between, you know, just regular having regular sound versus having music. Sound is just like kind of the distortions and things you hear, but music has to have pauses in between it so you can kind of hear things and so forth. But these are going to be the data statements that we're going to use below. And you'll see that you'll recognize these numbers on the data statements. 18, 104, 250 as we go for 18, 104, 500 and you'll start seeing that down here. Okay, so I did a little bit more organizing of my windows and I also wanted to put these down here so when we go ahead and we talk about this stuff, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I like to try to make my videos as easy as possible for people, but these are those whole notes and things that we were talking about up here earlier. So let's get back to the program example. So the data statements, you can see down here, and this is basically describes what's going over here with the whole note, half note, quarter note, and all that. So you can kind of see it broken down, and these are the N1, N2 that you're seeing me enter over here earlier, the N1, N2, and the duration, and all that stuff. Okay, so let's get the data statements in here. Whoops. Keep clicking in the wrong window. So we got note one, note two, duration. Note one, note two, duration. And you can see that down here, basically following in line with what the D requires and what this D requires for the, the one eighth note, the one quarter note, and half note, and so on. That's what this last value is doing. And then we got 104, 250. And I'm doing this all wrong. I'm putting in 150, 130. Let me just um, erase that for a second. I'm so used to doing them by tens, but they're not doing them by tens. They're doing them by twos here. So let's make sure that everything looks good. It looks good there. Okay. This first tutorial, this one is kind of short here, so. But later, there's a, a program I'll show you that plays the entire song. Let's see. 138, 140. I thought that was incorrect. So 138 is 24, 146, 500. And then... 140 is 30, 245, 1000. Okay, now we're rolling. And then this line right here is going to signal that the note needs to stop once it reaches zero. Then one equals zero, then we're going to end. 200. Clear the notes. And now we're going to hopefully run it and hopefully it'll work. If not, I've saved it on disk, even if it crashes. Let's we'll see what happens. Okay, so evaluating, I just discovered my mistake. I messed up these lines right here. So basically, we never initialized the piano to begin with. So 30 is supposed to be... I looked in the book, I never would have made this mistake, but I was looking at my example I typed in right there. 255 initializes the piano. 
and then 40 is the s plus 3 comma 0, so it should work now. And that's all it does is it plays just a short interval of the sound um, for the song. So going back over this, um, as you can see, this is the pulse waveform, and I, you know, initialized these. Um, basically, I'm sorry, I commented these so you can really see what's going on. We talked about the voice one for the five and the S plus three. This is the attack, decay, sustain, release, or how long you want to hold those notes, release them, and so forth. Um, the N1, N2, note one, note two, duration. And the N1 equals zero to end the program. So once it reads note zero, it, it kills it. And then these are the these are the notes controls. S plus one is at 54, 272 plus one, or 54, 273 that I showed you at the very beginning. And that's going to be what puts in the notes, those values that we saw down here, of course. And then we've got um, this duration. Z equals one to DR next Z, our duration. And then we've got um, S plus 4 comma 64 and 65. This is initialized as a piano, as we saw earlier, which I don't have the example here. Hold on a second. So I just screenshotted it to show you right here. So this is what we saw earlier, piano, the flute, harpsichord, xylophone, accordion, trumpet, and the noise. And that's what this register is doing right here for the 64 and the 65. So you see right there, 64 is on, 64 or is off. To turn them on and off, that's the piano. So later we're going to go in and we're going to change these values 64 and 65 to something like 17, 16, um, 33, 32 to get the, the appropriate instrument. And I have an example program that will show you that. Okay, so the next thing we got here is a uh, poke. Um, let's see, this is the duration so that we can hear the sound position. Um, based on, you know, knowing your notes and based on knowing, you know, what values are doing what according to the program here. I went too far there. Right here, so you are basically know how to, if you know how to play a piano, you can go and you can create your own program on a Commodore 64 now that you know what value is doing what and how to create that instrument and how to get those notes accordingly. So for the musicians, this will probably make a lot more sense, but for people who are not more musicians, they might be a little bit more thrown off. But this whole book right here is a real good for musicians since it shows you what you know key to play in to get a certain song and maybe later I'll try to create like a rock song or something like that but at the same time I gotta stay away from that because YouTube will copyright those songs and then I can't monetize anything so anyways that's um I think we could just move on to the next example okay so I've already loaded in the next example um, this is according to the book so this is everything we just went over earlier but this plays a complete song so if we go in here we run this So it went through a succession of all the notes just as we saw the example, note one, note two, to get that chord or to get that note. And then you've got the duration, of course. So we kind of went over that. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys. So these first three notes right here is representing these data statements. They just have them kind of all bunched together here, where earlier you saw them on separate lines. Just note it just separates them between the read. So it says read one, in one, in two, duration. It's just reading these first three. And then after it reads those and it goes through it and it sets the registers and initializes the piano, it moves on to the next three, the next three, and so on. And that's how you get those in compositions back to back. So if you have your own song, you could go online, you could look up a song. I mean, any song, rock song or whatever, and you could throw in these notes and you could emulate that sound or that song. Okay, so let's move on to the next, next example. Okay, so this is the program I was talking about. Is we talked about earlier the piano, the flute, harpsichord, xylophone, accordion, trumpet, noise. We're now going to basically see a program that I created that allow you to reproduce any of these and basically change the sound. Since we've already heard the piano, we just press the number key. It'll correspond to that, and you'll see the notes here on the screen corresponding to what we have down here. So let me just press a number here, and I'll show you. So, for example, if we want to hear what the flute sounds like, we just press 2. And you can see the notes playing according to down here. But this is this is only the first portion of the, the earlier program. This is all the notes playing from the original long one that you saw.
I added that stuff that wasn't originally an example. Okay, so we played the flute. Now, the harpsichord kind of sounds like the piano, so I think we'll do the xylophone next. But this will be available for GitHub. Actually, that one does sound kind of similar. I think the accordion sounds different. So let's do the accordion next. Sounds good to me. I think I just hit the same one again. Break out, and we'll show you the code later here. So I meant to do five. There we go. It's got more of a distinct sound. Now let's do the trumpet, and that flashing you're seeing is a signaling that it's it's done with the notes, and you can move on to the next instrument. So we'll do uh, trumpet. You can also do noise. <laughs> and if I have mentioned it, the song is Tom Dooley that we're playing here. So let's um break out and take a look at the code here. So you recognize all this is very similar, except right here you'll see a difference here. You see this R2, remember that's register 2, R3, register 3, R5, register 5, R6, register 6. That's just going to take these values based on whatever key we press and enter them into these fields here. Everything else is either the same, and this right here, line 72, for example, is just going to print those notes on the screen that you saw earlier. So this basically S is for homing it, homes the cursor. If you don't know, you don't remember anything about this, watch the very first or second tutorial on very basic series and you'll learn more about, you know, those uh, special characters and controlling up and down and moving the cursor around on the screen. And these are the note positions to get the, the correct notes here for N1 and N2. And this is obviously, um, we're going to pick which instrument we're picking. And R4 plus 1 is just picking the 64 plus 1, which would be 65 or whatever instrument we're choosing. And then the data statements are always going to be the same since they're the actual notes. And then here's the display messages. Oh, I didn't mention this, but at the top here, I basically initialize the sound register just like we saw earlier. I set TV for a tab so we can set up a, a variable to tab and move our cursor around to get our positioning going on. And at first it goes to line 300, which you saw down here. Right here, this displays the messages. You saw, you saw these messages on the screen earlier. Just allowing you to press the one key, two key, three key, up to seven to get that appropriate instrument. And then it just returns back and goes to the next line, which is uh, 420. So then it goes to 420. Remember, those ghost ups just return back where they came from. And here's where all the keys are initialized. You can see if we're pressing the, the, the keyboard, we're not doing anything, then we're going to initialize it and not do anything, wait for a key to be pressed. But if we are, then what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be saying um, which key are we pressing, which number. And this is just a way of converting it to show the, the numbers that are putting uh, a value in here. You can just put in um, a string here and it looks at that as appropriate string. So we know the one key is going to initialize the piano. We know uh, that's the piano. 225 was the piano. Actually, it's 255, isn't it? See, I made the mistake too, like the book did there. So I think that might be an error in that printing or something. But anyways, um, that's the piano. And then we've got the next one here for the um, order. I think that was the, um, was the harpsichord or what was it? Oh, the flute. That was the flute right there. And those are the register values for the flute. As we saw example up here earlier, right here. And then number three is, see, is the harpsichord. 
And you see the harpsichord over here? Oh, I can just look at this actually. So one, two, three, four is our xylophone. We can see these are the registers for the xylophone. Five is our accordion, and you can see the registers for the accordion being poked into those values earlier. The trumpet is six, and we can see the registers down here, 32, 33. Well, actually, it just, it just uses the 32, and it adds the one to it to get the 33. I just, it's just a trick I did to make it easier. Instead of having to create an extra value, I just figured it would be better just to kind of, you know, just alternate that. And then we've got the noise, which basically is just like the sound effects, and that's pressing the number seven key. And these are the values for the noise, according to the book. And this just flashes the border here. So it basically increments the loop, and it increases the border color, and it resets it back to normal. So now I'm going to show you, um, now that we went over that, I'm going to show you um, another part of the book, the last part of the book here to finish it off, is sound effects. Okay, so this was actually in the book example. This just shows different sound effects, and I'll run it and show it to you. And you just press the number here, and it's going to give that sound effect, whether it's a wailing sound, a shooting sound, a siren, a rocket, crash, or a machine gun. And we just press the number. Actually, the wailing sound didn't work. I remember that. Right there. There's the shooting. So it's more like water. You can just basically poke in that value to turn it off. Notice as I pause, you can still hear the sound sounding out because it's basically running inside of an interrupt in the background here. So we can just use this to turn it off to restart it. And then we got the siren, the rocket, crash. It sounds like the space shuttle taking off. And then we got the machine gun. Do it a few times, you can hear it. Let's see if the whaling works yet. Yeah, the whaling just did not want to work. I'll probably have to look at that later and see if I can fix that. But the whaling, I looked at the, the data examples and they look all the same. I don't really see anything. Now this is only a very basic tutorial. There's so much more you can do with sound. Obviously, you've seen Commodore 64 games, and they really go into a lot of good examples of some of the sounds you can really hear in games in general. There's just so many things um, that I couldn't even really explain in this video. But this, since this is a very basic tutorial series, I didn't want to go into all those other controls and oscillators and really showing you how to really manipulate your sounds. Maybe we'll do that later, but like I said, it's just a basic series, and I just hope you guys enjoyed this session. Okay, also, I was going to, before I fr quickly forget, I just wanted to mention before we leave for the night, um, so this is what you saw earlier. I probably didn't show you that there's a lot more here. They go all the way up to 255, so this is a document that, it, actually, it was up to 123 here. These are all those high and low bytes I was talking about earlier, poking in the values, but this gets more into an advanced section. It's just basically allowing you to control more of the musical composition and, you know, what really make it real cool professional music, so... This is a little bit off base here, but this is actually a good document I found online that teaches you, and I was reading a little bit through this, how to read and understand music. If you're interested, it's musicnotes.com. I found it kind of interesting. They break it all down for visual learners like myself. So you can see the piano keyboard and just some um, the scales and stuff like that. Just really great. I think it's a great, great document. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check it out. So anyways, guys, it looks like I made it in time. I still have just a few minutes to spare, so I'm glad I just didn't go over on this video. I think I showed you everything, the sound effects, how to hopefully understand musical composition. Now you understand, basically, you have to set up those um, values to indicate which instrument you're going to choose, and you have to set up the tack, how long you want it to sound, the decay, sustain, release, and all that, so it sounds appropriate. You can change the sound and get distortion sound effects and stuff like that. And obviously there's um, a, value, a set of numbers that you're going to use to represent certain notes from the, the D, the G, E, C, whatever. You know, if you're playing in key, you can actually sit there and set them up and play in key and stuff like that. So since I do know how to play guitar and, you know, I'm kind of a musician myself, I might create, like I said, a program later that creates some kind of a sound. I know it's going to get copyrighted if I do something like November Rain or, you know, just... Michael Jackson or what, whatever kind of sound. I'm from the 80s, so I kind of like 80s music, Duran Duran, you know, sticks. 
the stuff like that. You can create that on the Commodore 64. What I also didn't talk about is you can also do multiple voices. You can create chords and stuff like that. But it's a very basic tutorial series, so I didn't want to go over all that. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial series as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. And please, I always appreciate your likes, favorites, subscribes, and sharing this video with your friends. Yes, let's get the Commodore 64 out there. I really, really want to get in touch with the community. Um, if anybody's out there is interested in whether it's building programs or whatever, I really, really want to get in contact with you, and i really like to hear back from you. Now, very fortunately, recently, I did get in contact with an actual guy. He does real-life demos. This is going to be sidestepping a little bit, uh, talking about the Machine Language Project, but he actually does real-life professional demos. And I think that would be really interesting to try to get him on the team. And anyways, he sent me some of his uh, work and examples. And wow, just astounding. So hats off to you. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And let's keep the word great in the Commerce 64 because it's great. Thanks for watching.